Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of Programming and Algorithms. In this episode we're going to look at how Python implements iteration. So we'll remember we looked at different kinds of loops in iteration. We looked at while, for, do and the loop loop. As it happens, Python doesn't implement a lot of these, but different programming languages do. So it's important for me that you guys have an awareness of the range of functions that programming languages have. Even if a particular language like Python doesn't implement a, a particular feature, I'm not necessarily teaching you guys a course on Python programming. I'm teaching you how to design programs and then implement them in Python. So if you started learning Java or Pascal or Modula 2 or Scheme or Lisp or Python or Prolog or any other language, it would be as easy to pick up any of them because of the way we're looking at this. So let's look at how Python implements iteration. We'll start off with the while loop. Python has a while loop function. It's while some condition do some statements. Again, because I'm fussy, I'd like you to put in the word do after the while condition and put an int while at the end of the statements. Python doesn't need it. It, it, it can ignore the int while. It'll know you've finished the while statement by the indentation. So because the word statements is pushed out by a tab, when the, the next command that's in line with the start of the line again, it will know that's the end of the while loop. But I like to put in end while anyway. It helps me understand it a lot more clearer, so I'd appreciate for your assignments so that I can read them and understand them and your activities in the labs that we do it like this. So if we want to print out the numbers 1 to 5, we've done it before. The program is called print 1 to 5. So we say a gets the value 1 while a is not equal to 6. Do print a, a gets a plus 1. And we'll note again, we'll remember that assignment now uses the equal sign to represent a sign so instead of the arrow sign and not equal to is exclamation mark equals. So that's the code. It says A is 1, while A is not 6, do print out A and add 1 in onto A. We'll note that after the word do, the next two statements are indented out. So that means they're included in the while loop and then the word in while is unindented, unpushed out by a tab again. So how does this work? A starts off as 1, we print out 1, 1 is added on, then we print out 2, then 3, then 4, then 5. When, a print, when we print out the number 5, we add 1 onto A and it becomes 6. While A is not equal to 6, is 6 equal to 6? It is, so the condition is no longer valid, so then it jumps on to the end while. Same as before, so to print out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If we want to print out the number 1,000, 1 to 1,000, we just change a, while a not equal to 6 to while a not equal to 1,001. And then to print out the numbers 1 to 1,000. Let's print out the sum of the values 1 to 5. As we did before, a is 1, the total is 0, while a is not equal to 6, do. Total gets total plus a. So if a starts off as being 1 and total is 0, total becomes 1 plus 0, which is 1. We add 1 onto a. It's 2, and then total gets 2 plus 1, which is 3, and so on. And then we print out that total, whatever the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 added up are, exactly as we did in the pseudocode. We looked at the factorial in pseudocode, so let's see how that gets implemented in Python. We'll remember that factorial means it's the number multiplied by the number minus 1, multiplied by the number minus 2, multiplied by the number minus 3, all the way to 1. So 7 factorial, 7 by 6 by 5 by 4 by 3 by 2 by 1. So what does that look like in Python? That looks like in Python program factorial. Again, writing that in for ourselves. We get the value read in from the user. We input, please input value, and we do integer. Then we get uh, start off with a total of 1. We keep looping around while value is not equal to 0. And we multiply total by value and we decrement the value by 1. So that's the while loop. Simple as that. It's exactly the same way as we do it in pseudocode. Now, for the for loop in Python, the for loop works as follows. It's for some range, colon, do some statements. Again, because I'm a bit fussy about this, what I'd like us to do is for some range do in for. To say it one more time, because I've got hashes, Python will ignore those, so if we just have for range statements, it'll work the same as for range hash do statements hash in for. It's going to skip those anyway, but I like them so that I can read the code more clearly. And I always say this to programmers, I used to be a software developer and indeed a software team leader. You are writing code for the next person. 
Because you'll write code for a company and then you'll leave that company and somebody else is going to have to read your code. So the more clear you can make it for the next person who's going to use your code, the, the kinder you are being and the more professional you are being as a software developer. So if we wanted to print out the numbers 1 to 5 using a for loop, that's using a while loop again, but let's do it as a for loop. We just say for A in the range 1 to 6, do print out A. Now that's interesting. In the range 1 to 6 means it'll print out the numbers of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and stop at the number 5. So 6 is the value at which it'll stop printing stuff out. So it won't print out the number 6, it'll just print out A in the range of 1 to, to in value 6. So this will print out 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5 and then stop. So that's a for loop. A do loop, all right, bad news. Uh, Python doesn't implement a do loop. We remember the do loop was where it'll execute it at least once and there's a condition at the end. A while loop does the same thing anyway, so, if, so it's no big deal. And then a loop loop. Same issue, Python doesn't implement the loop loop, but we can do it if we want to. Python does have a, a break statement as well as an exit statement. A break statement will break out of a loop. So if we wrote code, for example, we said x is equal to 1. While x is equal to 1, do keep looping. That's called an infinite loop. If x is 1 and we're checking while x is equal to 1, it'll keep looping around. If we never change the value of x, that's an infinite loop because x will always be equal to 1, so it'll keep going around. So then if we wanted to exit we could do one of two things. We could change the value of x to 2 and then it would exit or we could have some condition that's that if some condition is true then we do break and that break means it, it jumps out of the code. So we can kind of implement a loop like that but we'll be focusing mainly on the while loop while some condition and the for loop for in some range. All right, over to you. I want you to play around with that code and see, play around with the code on my website or in web courses and play around with the for loop and the while loop and in combination with the if statement. Thanks very much. We'll see you on the next episode.